Ever since I put out my video ranking the top 10 greatest samurai leaders, I've wanted to come back to do another top 10 list. Finally, I've decided that time to be right now. So this time, I want to do a countdown of the greatest samurai warriors. As opposed to my last list, these samurai are not necessarily the leaders, but rather the fighters. Those who fought in the front lines of major battles that helped shape the history of Japan. Now, a bit different from my previous list, the way I'm going to go about ranking these samurai is by taking into account a few different things. This includes their renown for being a skilled warrior, how many battles they actually fought in, and of course, how stories of their exploits have gone on to be remembered by people in Japan to this day. Taking all of these facts into account, I will then use my personal judgment to rank them accordingly. Just like my last top 10, this is not a list necessarily saying who would defeat who in battle. Instead, this is just a comparative ranking using the factors I just mentioned. Of course, you may have an entirely different list than me, perhaps using figures that I left out, and that's great. If you do, put it in the comments section, because I always love to see what you guys think. Also, very important, I just want to say that in this list, I am not going to include the greatest samurai duelist, Miyamoto Musashi. And the reason for that is that I do not think it is fair to compare him to many of the other samurai we are looking at. The samurai we are examining are samurai who actually fought in wars. And while Musashi is said to have been at the Battle of Sekigahara, we do not know much of his exploits at Sekigahara. And on top of that, being in one battle doesn't cut it. So for fairness sake, I've decided to remove Musashi entirely from my consideration. Musashi is the greatest samurai duelist of all time, I am not contesting that, but he's not necessarily the greatest samurai warrior. So with that all out of the way, let's dive in. Starting things off with number 10, Shibata Katsuie. A veteran Oda clan retainer with a stern yet fiery attitude, Katsuie served in an extensive career under Oda Nobunaga, as he would see action over a multitude of conflicts, in time becoming one of Nobunaga's most trusted commanders. Some of the major engagements in which he fought include the Battle of Okehizama, the Siege of Nagashima, the Siege of Odani, the Battle of Nagashino, and the Battle of Tedorigawa. After the death of his lord Nobunaga, he would come to clash with Hashiba Hideyoshi at the Battle of Shizugatake, in which he would make his last stand, eventually choosing to take his own life rather than die at the hands of Hideyoshi. This last act saw him kill his wife along with other members of their household before lighting his castle on fire and committing seppuku. He would later be remembered as a devil or demon of war. Number 9. Saito Musashibo Benke Living a wild and adventurous life, the samurai known as Benke is remembered to have been a man of great strength. Initially, he was seen to have taken the life of a warrior monk, becoming skilled in the usage of the Naginata polearm. Later, it is said he wandered Kyoto, defeating and taking the swords from samurai he deemed unworthy to carry a blade. Eventually, he met his match against a young, skilled samurai named Minamoto Yoshitsune. This would cause Benke to eventually pledge his loyalty to him. The two would fight side by side during the climactic Genpei War, where Benke is said to have exhibited his raw strength and martial prowess to slay hundreds of men, although that number is most likely a romanticized exaggeration. In the end, Yoshitsune would be betrayed by his kin, the soon-to-be shogun Minamoto Yoritomo, causing him and Benke to become outlaws. Benkei would make a heroic last stand at the Koromogawa, defending Yoshitsune against waves of incoming enemies, who would eventually resort to using arrows to finally kill him. Number 8 Fukushima Masanori Seeing his first action fighting under Hashiba Hideyoshi during his western campaign against the Mori clan, Masanori would rise to become one of the most ferocious fighters of his time. He would become well known for his lust to seize the honor of drawing first blood in combat, often coming to lead vanguard infantry units into battle. After the Battle of Shizugatake, he would become known as one of the Seven Spears of Shizugatake, a group of seven bodyguards of Hideyoshi who displayed exemplary service in that conflict, most of whom would end up becoming daimyo in their own right. He would in time see extensive action throughout the failed invasion of Korea and later lead the Tokugawa vanguard at the Battle of Sekigahara, 
although the honor of drawing first blood in that battle would be robbed from him by our next entry. Number 7. Yi Naomasa A Tokugawa retainer, Naomasa made a name for himself during the battle of Komaki and Nagakute, where he commanded a unit of matchlock armed soldiers to defeat a Toyotomi force under Ikeda Tsuneoki. After which, his efforts would even become praised by Hideyoshi, who was his enemy at the time. Naomasa would come to famously wear red armor and lead a unit of red-clad warriors known as the Red Devils, who became both revered and feared. Later, he would see extensive action during the brutal siege of Odawara, leading a breakthrough of the Hojo positions. At Sekigahara, he became angered that the former Toyotomi loyalist Fukushima Masanori was selected to lead the Tokugawa vanguard insisting that the honor should go to a veteran Tokugawa retainer like himself. This caused him to instead break away before the battle was joined, as he and his red devils charged past Masunori to clash with the enemy before anyone else could. His intensity can be seen as unrivaled at the time, even pushing in deep against the Shimazu lines where he would be shot by Shimazu gunners. Although he would survive the battle, he would die roughly a year and a half later from the injuries he sustained at Sekigahara. Number 6. Kusunoki Masashige During the waning years of the Kamakura Shogunate, when the Emperor Godaigo wished to return to ultimate power, he attracted a group of disheartened samurai who valued loyalty to the Emperor over loyalty to the Shogun. One such samurai was Kusunoki Masashige. Initially being heavily outnumbered by Shogunate forces, Masashige would claim impressive victories by utilizing guerrilla warfare-like tactics to defeat his larger foes. This in turn won him much prestige in the eyes of the Emperor. In time, the Imperial Loyalists would overthrow the Kamakura Shogunate, ushering in a new period of Imperial authority. Although it would be short-lived, as Emperor Godaigo immediately began alienating the very same samurai who had just fought in his name. Through all of this, Masashige remained loyal, even up to the point when a new samurai army under the command of Ashikaga Takauji was on the verge of marching on Kyoto to tear down the re-empowered emperor. Masashige would try to convince Godaigo to flee Kyoto in aims to strike out against Takauji at a later date. Yet, ultimately, Masashige would be forced to sally out with a small army to make a final stand against the Ashikaga force at Minatogawa. Masashige would fight bitterly to the end, but would ultimately be crushed. Roughly half a century later, following the Boshin War, when the Emperor was once again restored, the memory of Kusunoki Masashige would return as he became a symbol of unwavering Imperial loyalty. Number 5. Kato Kiyomasa Related to Toyotomi Hideyoshi and, like him, born of humble origins, Kiyomasa would first earn recognition serving in Hideyoshi's western campaign against the Mori clan, later fighting at Yamazaki and Shizugatake, where he too earned the distinction of becoming known as one of the Seven Spears of Shizugatake. He would fight in the conquest of Kyushu and in time become one of the leading figures during the Imjin War, commanding brutal campaigns deep into the Korean peninsula. It is here we can see firsthand his cruelty and love of war. Kiyomasa is said to have had an aura of militarism, valuing martial prowess over all else. He would even order soldiers under his command to refrain from poetry and dancing as he saw them as unworthy actions of true warriors. As while in Korea, he himself took to hunting tigers with his spear. After the end of the war in Korea, Kiyomasa would side with Tokugawa Ieyasu against Ishida Mitsunari during the lead up to the Battle of Sekigahara. This would lead to a new round of fighting throughout Kyushu, where he sought to bring down all Ishida Western Army loyalists, in particular the Shimazu. Although he sided with Tokugawa Ieyasu, his loyalty to the Toyotomi family remained intact. In fact, it can be argued that he may have only sided against Mitsunari because he hated him for past grievances. After Sekigahara, and in the build-up to the new conflict regarding Toyotomi Hideyori at Osaka Castle, it is argued that Tokugawa Ieyasu had Kiyomasa poisoned in 1611 rather than have such a fierce and well-regarded warrior as himself take the side of the Toyotomi heir. Number 4. Shimazu Yoshihiro Of all of the famous and important Shimazu clan warriors, Yoshihiro had the most impressive career. 
Fighting ferociously against the Shimazu clan's enemies throughout Kyushu, he became instrumental in many of the clan's new victories. In fact, he and his brothers nearly unified the island were it not for the invasion of Toyotomi Hideyoshi. Even then, Yoshihiro put forth a mighty effort against the Toyotomi, even wishing to continue the fight long after his brothers began suing for peace. He later fought in Korea, scoring a number of impressive victories, most prominently at the Battle of Sachon, where he defeated a numerically superior Chinese and Korean army while also inflicting massive casualties. During the Sekigahara campaign, Yoshihiro would end up siding with Ishida Mitsunari, although the two would later have an unfortunate falling out when on the eve of battle, Yoshihiro suggested a night raid against Tokugawa positions, a suggestion that Mitsunari shot down immediately and in doing so also slighting Yoshihiro. If he had only listened to Yoshihiro and gone ahead with the night raid, it may have actually done much to sway things in favor of Mitsunari's forces. Instead, the battle would be a complete disaster for him. Mitsunari's insult caused Yoshihiro to betray him by deciding to simply sit out of the action until finally clashing with I Naomasa while the Shimazu forces were attempting to withdraw. In the end, it is suggested that when Tokugawa Ieyasu learned of Yoshihiro's actions at Sekigahara, he decided not to strip the Shimazu of their territory, yet still they would be branded as Tozama Damyo, outsiders who did not formally submit to the Tokugawa until 1602. This in turn allowed the Shimazu of Satsuma to live on, as they would one day be instrumental in the overthrow of the Tokugawa shogunate during the Boshin War. Number 3. Minamoto Yoshitsune A valiant warrior and skilled commander, Yoshitsune alongside his friend and ally, Benkei, fought together throughout the climactic Genpei War. As Yoshitsune would come to lead the Minamoto clan to a series of impressive and awe-inspiring victories against their Taira clan enemies, with his most significant triumph being at the Battle of Dan no Ura, which ended up being the legendary final engagement of the war. In the aftermath, as Minamoto Yoritomo would go on to become the new shogun and found the Kamakura shogunate, he saw Yoshitsune as a potential rival to his power and influence. This was spurred forth by rumors that implied Yoshitsune to have a treasonous intent. This would lead Yoritomo to eventually order the death of Yoshitsune, who would finally be hunted down and killed in 1189. However, Yoshitsune's legacy would live on as one of the most graceful and skilled samurai who ever lived, and one of the most prominent figures of the Genpei War, being instrumental in its conclusion. Number 2 Honda Tarakatsu A legendary retainer of Tokugawa Ieyasu, Honda Tarakatsu was a native of Mikawa province and initially supported the radical true Pure Land sect of Buddhism, championed by the Ikoiki. Upon seeing the merit of the young Matsudaira Motoyasu, who had returned to Mikawa to reclaim his birthright in the aftermath of Okezama, Tarakatsu abandoned the true Pure Land faith and went on to serve Motoyasu who in time would of course change his name to Tokugawa Ieyasu. From that point on, Tarakatsu became Ieyasu's top commander, fighting in nearly every battle beside his lord. From Anegawa to Mikatagahara to Nagashino to almost every single engagement all the way to Sekigahara, Tarakatsu became an instrument of war, clad in black and crowned with antlers, wielding not only the Tambogiri, one of the three legendary spears of Japan, but also a sword crafted by the legendary smith Masamune. He indeed would become one of the most intimidating warriors to have ever lived. At the conflict of Komaki and Nagakute, it is said that when buying time for Ieyasu, Tadakatsu rode out against a much larger Toyotomi force, although upon seeing the bravery of Tadakatsu, Hideyoshi decided not to engage. Later, in the prelude to Sekigahara, during the clash at the Kuisegawa, Tadakatsu would aid several other Tokugawa commanders who had been ambushed by Western Army forces under Shima Sakon. Tadakatsu would intervene once again, buying time for his allies to escape before fighting his own way out. After the Tokugawa victory at Sekigahara, Tadakatsu would live on until finally passing away in 1610. He is often remembered today as the warrior who surpassed death due to the fact that he never once sustained an injury in any of his many battles. Number 1 Sanada Yukimura Son of Sanada Masayuki and younger brother to Sanada Nobuyuki, 
Sanada Nobushige, better known today as Yukimura, would spend much of his youth as a hostage to first the Uesugi and later to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, to whom his father had pledged his allegiance to. In fact, Yukimura may have even participated in the conquest of Kyushu, engaging in the bitter fighting against the Shimazu. Later, he would serve extensively in the Imjin War, where he would earn the nickname the number one warrior in Japan. Following the Imjin War and in the lead up to Sekigahara, Masayuki and Yukimura would take the side of Ishida Mitsunari and defend their castle of Ueda for a second time against a massive Tokugawa army, an army which was under the command of Tokugawa Ieyasu's son and heir Hidetada. The Sanada would claim victory for the second time defending Ueda against the Tokugawa and would succeed installing Hidetada's force which was supposed to be on its way to Sekigahara where it was desperately needed. In the aftermath, because the Sanada sided with Ishida Mitsunari who lost at Sekigahara, Yukimura would be sent into exile. Although 14 years later, as a new conflict was arising in regards to Toyotomi Hideyori at Osaka Castle, Yukimura would escape from his exile and hurry to Osaka to aid the Toyotomi heir. It is here Yukimura would make a series of desperate attempts at defending Osaka against insurmountable forces under the command of Tokugawa Ieyasu. During this conflict, Yukimura would showcase his capability by proving to be a terrifyingly fierce commander and warrior, depriving Ieyasu of a swift victory. Being vastly outnumbered, he fought the Tokugawa forces to a devastating standstill during the Winter Siege of Osaka, inflicting massive casualties. And later, he nearly broke the Tokugawa army in the final battle of Tenoji during the Summer Siege. Ultimately, Yukimura would realize all hope to be fading and order a last ditch full charge against Ieyasu's position, which would result in an all out heroic final assault that put Yukimura within inches of killing Ieyasu. However, it would all be in vain, as Ieyasu would narrowly escape death. Surrounded by hundreds of Tokugawa samurai, Yukimura would die at Tenoji, his last words famously asking who would dare to take his head. Although his legacy would live on as one of the greatest samurai who ever lived, apart from being called Japan's number one warrior, he would also be known as a hero who may appear once in a hundred years, a crimson demon of war, and the last Sengoku hero. Today, similar to Kusunoki Masashige, Japan continues to honor the legacy and memory of Sanada Yukimura, as he is still seen as a symbol of resolute defiance and adherence to one's own integrity and honor. That is what makes him the greatest and most influential samurai warrior of all time. So that is my list of the top 10 greatest samurai warriors. I'm sure there are names you were expecting to see that I left out, or perhaps expected the order I had them in to be different. Whatever the case, like I said before, please leave me your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to see what your top 10 greatest samurai warriors list looks like. Anyways, I have more ideas for these top 10 lists, so expect more in the future. But until then, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most interesting.